Hello, I'm testing. Testing this, I hope. I'm doing this properly. So I'm here testing these. I'm not sitting down. I'm organizing everything. So good morning. How are you guys? Very early in the morning for me. And I'm going to get started with an experiment today. Something that I have not done, I think, like in a year or something like that. But let's see what we can do. I don't have my laptop here, so I cannot yet set the restrictions to only subscribers and things like that. So, let's see how we do with these. So my camera's ready. I don't have, I don't have really a lot of problems today with making noise. Last week, yes, because I had my family, my brother-in-law, my sister, my niece, they were sleeping upstairs and my house is very very small so little noise was possible okay I don't have my cat paws today because my cute niece decided to have them so I have to make a noise set Okay, let me open this up to show you what I have done over the week. Part of the other bridges. So there. And let me close this. Because I cannot see. I cannot see my streaming. Okay. So there you go. I don't know what I moved, but there you are. Hi, Miriam. Nice to see you here. I send you by messenger how I set up these. So you can see I don't have a lot of space, but I kind of make do with this because it's mobile, you know. This is my dad's office. So I have to be very, very clean after I finish my mess. So anyway, so this is something that I've done. This one doesn't have a name yet. I'm thinking about it. It's a mixture between an eagle, a manta, and an axolotl. In Spanish we saw ajolote. Okay, so. Welcome again, the people who are joining, Chris Kilue here. So welcome to the channel. I have not colored this one. I have it digital, but not, not traditional color. And I have done this one. And I like this much better than the other one. I like this cup. Well, not a cup, this is a grown up. Um, but the cup was not really that nice. I was nervous when I was doing this one, really nervous. And I was trying to show you graphic tint. So I think this one didn't go that well, but anyway, so I prefer this one much better pork bear bag. So this one's good. This one's nice. 
I like it. But here I've not decided what colors I'm going to have. I just added a little bit of texture with the permanent ink. And by the way, I got a new set because these ones are about to just run out. But they are really good. I had them for probably five years, not constantly using them, of course, but it's a good, good brand. I don't know if you can get these on Amazon or something like that. It's Japanese. Let me just try and see them. Show them closer to the camera. It's our lined drawing system. Japanese here that I'm not going to dare to pronounce. And different sizes. One, three, and five. So I found this good. I got the Pigma Micron, Micron, I don't know. So I'm going to start testing those very soon with the next one size. I create and then this one's still not done I just have the penguin I'm not so sure about the butterfly wings yet but I do like the antenna I might erase the wings you know because he's too heavy to fly anyway but it would be interesting for him to have something related i'm not sure if i'm going to raise the wings or keep them who knows if you have a suggestion let me know i didn't do much here because this week it was quiz week writing quiz a week so my students, my 80 something students, they're like 85, I think, 84, 85. They had to do a running composition quiz. And this started Thursday, Friday. Um, I have finished with two groups, but I still have to evaluate like 25 quizzes today. The most advanced, um, guys so i hope i can really read something nice because for the basic levels it's been torture spanish written with english words and you name it and of course i still love this lion with horns and the armadillo armadillo kind of armor here i still have to correct this but that's that's something that I will probably off stream and when I finish my grading. So this is what I've done, talking about sketching. And in the watercolor classes, I, I started testing this one and I was very surprised by the quality of the paper. This one is just so good. It's, it's very smooth and it tells you here, it's very smooth. It's uh, for acrylics, watercolor, pen and pencil. And I have been using ink tents, both from pencils and the pan. So I'm going to open my pan here if I can. My hands are very clumsy today. So I have my pan here and I have my pencils. The texture is so smooth, it's so nice. So color lays really, really beautifully. And this is a reference Beth posted on her Facebook group. I liked it. I decided to use gouache with this that I will show you later especially for Dawn, if she gets early, if not, she can watch the replay. But the paper is so smooth. It's very, very thick. So this one has got a lot of water. It has got acrylics. Of course, I didn't 
and uh, add water to all the background but it's a very thick paper and it's holding really really nicely so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start using the back of the drawing and using intents it will not transfer but anyway I'll probably use either rice paper or transfer paper I don't know whatever I can find that I can paste somewhere here so whatever I use is not transferring and this is the one that we started also with my student last Wednesday we finished this one we finished the bird and I sent her by WhatsApp this image that is also modified from something that Beth posted. So this is something that I like doing. I don't like to just copy exactly the same reference. You know, I try to add something. And as this is Valentine's Day, uh, these are just crumbs from the eraser. Uh, I decided just to change this one to a female and to have a different bird. The bird was, yeah, with this face, but this was the neck and the feathers were showing somewhere. The colors, everything, I would, we can work a little bit on this one as well. So you can get to see how this works. And I'm probably going to use a combination of graphic tints that I have here. And I insist, if you can ask somebody from Derwent to sponsor me I'd love to because I have a lot of their products that I have bought myself and I know there are a lot of new products so if you know somebody from Derwent who wants to sponsor me let them know here I am I'm in Mexico and we have a lot of people here who love these colors because they are available everywhere right now so I'm going to be using some of these here I have my swatch and they're beautiful colors. I love these colors for um, landscapes, for um, uh, limited what else. They're good for rocks. They lay very well on rocks. So I'm going to use this warm gray for the little mouse and every time I have students I always convince them to buy Darwin so my student right now she has got a pan of pastels Darwin pastels I don't like pastels that much so I'm not going to to buy that one she has got a 12th set of the graphite tint and she's got the 36 color set of ink tests. So I'm convincing people to buy them. And with more than 300 subscribers that I hope I can get more. So please share, subscribe, give me a big, big like, share it on social networks. So I hope they can see my video. Okay, or somebody who knows them. I've seen smaller channels being sponsored by this type of brands. So, and when I say smaller channels, they're less than 150 subscribers. So I'm like, well, if they got the sponsorship, if they got a free product, then why can I get another one? Hi, Marty, how are you? Nice to see you. I hope you're doing good, good morning for you and for everybody. I'm going to try and do this from a different setting. So just give me a second. We are going to be working, yeah, with Alebrijes. Oops, let me just send the foam in here. And Marty, I just gave you a blue dress. So there you go. Thank you for coming. So you can try your new setting. And well, we're doing this just briefly, very, very briefly. 
kind of nervous to start sculpting the alebrijes because I have no idea what I'm going to do. But anyway, so we used graphitin, very different to ink tens. They move more easily. You don't have to worry that much for ink to dry on you when you're moving the color, which is nice. And this is a warm gray for this cute mouse. I do have ink tense grays. And that would be an experiment for later on because I don't have my set here. And this gray that I have here is very, very dark. So I don't want to try that one here. But here you go. I just moved it just to show you a little bit how smooth this paper is. I love it. I really, really love it. It's really nice. And I'm working with, let me see if this is my India ink. I'm with artificial light right now. The sun is not even up yet. So, oh, I should be using my small little one. Not this one. So, change of plans. Just remember I have this. And I don't have here any of my tiny brushes. But here you go. So I'm not into drawing cutlery and cups and things like that. But I thought the image was interesting, Marty. I think that sometimes you have to get out of your comfort zone. And yes. Okay. By the way, you show me taking this out. I've shown this for two streams already. This one broke when I was sharpening it. And this broke. And I was so frustrated. And I was not going to drop this. I'm going to trash this. Because the pigment is very expensive. So, there you go. Now I use this one. Very effective. So I just need a little bit of color for this cute little guy. And you can see the difference when you move the ink tents and the graphite tint. This one is a little bit thicker in consistency when you move it. And the graffiti just moves beautifully, very, very easily. For this one, for ink tense, if you make a mistake, then what you can do is just add more layers. But my student loved this very casual, not very detailed effect. And she really loved this. I kind of forget that I'm using this brush that doesn't have a water tank or deposit. I'm not thinking properly, sorry. It's very early in the morning. And my cat was just so crazy at night. There was another cat around in the neighborhood. So that cat was teasing my cat outside the window. My cat is very, very possessive. So he was meowing and hissing and doing a lot of things there. So anyway, here you go. This is what we can do with ink tents. A little bit of a dark color here on his belly. Trying to be careful not to touch his eyes. This very, not very detailed look. So there you go. Okay, my water is here. This one goes back to the little box. I saw this container in one of Beth's streams. It's a big box with 56 individual cups, but they are in groups of four. So, if I have another broken tip, I will start labeling the colors here. But right now, it's not really needed. I just have one. 
so no problem and i just know which one it is because it's the only one that is shorter and yes yes Marty, they're, flirting. they're flirting now what about these things that i have here as special effects on the cups well many of you probably know because i have mentioned it before we have here recently in Querétaro, where I live in Mexico, this city, two hours, two hours and a half north of Mexico City, we got an HEV, which is direct competition from Walmart and others, local supermarkets we have. And I found this pens with liquid ink. This one is kind of permanent, it's 0.5 millimeters. The brand is, their local brand is called GTC. And they really, really have nice products. Some of them are just crap, school supplies. But these ones were really good, I'm surprised. And the pens are really nice, they're elegant. Okay, so it's pure liquid ink and whenever uh, they start the discounts on school supplies i just go and get gel pens um, i got a set of six watercolor pens and they are nice and yeah not necessarily pastel marty but they have these nice colors that you can see on the cups and I like them. I'm going to see if they're waterproof later on. I'm going to try and give a little bit more intense shadows here. But they are so cute. They are really nice. Because unfortunately here, my, my Walmart is just for basic supplies, you know. Uh, I'm talking about food, cans. Uh, cleaning products and you go to the art section and there's nothing there's really nothing not even in in back to school sales uh, the products they have is just for elementary school kids and that's it secondary school probably high school really nice art colors not good something that i have discovered not good so the only art options that i have are reduced to amazon which is expensive of course and i just don't like it i have to pay um shipping which is not my favorite thing to do and when I get free shipping, sometimes things don't arrive. I wanted to try jelly printing because I've seen I've seen you, Miriam, doing beautiful things with jelly printing in a very reduced space. I saw your photo of the very reduced space. So I'm going to start trying that one. I asked for small jelly plate, and more or less this size, since September, and it hasn't arrived. And now I cannot cancel that product because it was um, bought with something else. I got that already. I got it in September. But that jelly plate has not been shipped. So I'm very frustrated with Amazon. And I decided to get uh, the 8, 8, 10, the letter size jelly plate. And that one, I think, is coming next week. It was on discount. If if not, I wouldn't have. And I'll try to see that. But I couldn't get a big prayer. So I'm going to be using a mini prayer. Because that mini prayer was for this size. So I hope I can do something. Okay. And certainly, I'll be asking a lot, a lot about jelly plate printing and things like that. Because... um. 
I'm afraid of trying it. I'm afraid of liking that so much and then just getting very obsessed like I've done with these. So what I'm adding here is ink pens directly from my pen. And this would be another experiment. I forgot upstairs my glitter watercolor, local brand, not very fancy, not very elegant, but I'm going to lay this color here and later on I'll add a little bit of gold watercolor. My niece loves those watercolors. I gave her a set for her birthday and she loves them. I used her uh, spirograph last Saturday when they were here. They couldn't come for Christmas. Uh, there were some problems with their car. So my sister told me we won't be able to go until February. So save the Christmas presents because we're going to have a Christmas in February. So we did. And my niece was just so happy with her spy graph and she got a hold of that really fast as I gave her tips on how to use them. And she doesn't know that I've got the super set spirograph. But I normally don't do spirographing here on this channel. I have another channel called um, Miss G's Bits and Pieces. And I'm going to put the name, I'm not going to link it on chat. Because, you know, I'm using the Android for my chat here so I can see you but uh, if I can I'll link it with the iPhone that I also have here oops I don't know how to write today this is terrible I'm very dyslexic this morning dyslexia that I have oh. anyway I'll try to write this down I get the space and this is a channel that I use for crazy stuff and when I mean crazy stuff it's really crazy okay pieces oh I don't know how to type in today and if I type something there there you go that's the name of the channel I'll try to link it from my iPhone, but that's where you can find crazy stuff. Spirographs, Marvel Legends figures, uh, marbles, I love marbles. So I collect these beautiful glassmate spheres because they are fantastic. And well, um you can tell me i have a lot a lot of crazy stuff there so anyway let me go and find my other channel and sometimes i create um how can i tell you um, very very crazy things um i'm going to link a video from that channel so you can find it easily um, from something that I made like two years ago let me go back to my channel here and to open the chat um, I'm thinking here oh thank you Carl thank you very much thank you welcome this is on YouTube. Um, this is uh, the channel that Carol put, and I'm going to link a video of a marble run that you can create with uh, clothes pins. Exactly the ones that Carol used for bobbing lace. I use those to create a marble race. So if you have small kids and you don't know how to entertain them, you can just create marble races with everything. 
So thank you very much, Carol. And then underneath you have the video for that specific marble race, marble track that you can create with your small little kids. And it's just great. I just love it. My niece uh, has taken um, marble tracks that I have created with uh, cardboard, with empty boxes. Um, we we have created different games. I mean, that other channel has got a lot of, of information. I haven't been able to do much there, lack of time. Um, but I prefer, I, I do prefer to be a full-time teacher at university than just a regular teacher, you know. Regular teachers uh, have classes probably two, maximum four months a year and later they have to go and find more classes in other schools but in my case as a full-time teacher i have the advantage of signing a contract which finally happened last week and that contract is from january to early so i think it's going to be early december this year and that guarantees that i have and a job all year yes they're going to give me a lot a lot of work they're going to give me sometimes schedules that are so crazy that I might not like that much but the advantage is that I will just have enough income for that and me and of course what I love the most, and I know you agree with me, more income for material. Oh God, this is the best thing. And yeah, I get very excited when I get material. I have very little space, but I cannot just stop buying things and experimenting with things. I just love it. Okay, so thank you very much, Miriam, for subscribing. Thank you very much, Carl, for sharing the link. And um, I'm going to try and have this week a kind of a social media calendar. So I'll be updating that other channel with more spirographs. And the other day I dreamt, that's so crazy. I dreamt about a track inside a small box, a marble track inside a small box. And I happen to have a small, uh, a small box like that. So I'm going to be working with my planning there. Okay. So definitely we can just put a lot of things there in boxes. I have most of my material in boxes. And right now that I'm just so in love with ink tents, I just want to use these. But anyway, I'm going to move into something different because the last thing I want to do are the alebrijes as soon as I have more people here. So there you go recommended paper british sophie's art supplies the last time i checked uh it was uh it, it was out of the stock in amazon and now it's a little bit more expensive sending it to mexico so if you're in europe or if you get the advantage of being in the usa and it's not that expensive for you go for it they have got the big size the letter size and they have got this one and they sell them in packages of three so for the price you get a very very good paper so let me put this one away and i wanted to show you my experimentation with gouache and how this one finished this one is done yeah finally after i don't know how many weeks um it takes me ages to finish these things you know that's why i don't open commissions or something like that because i don't have time plus in mexico they really don't value this type of art that much so there you go finally finished ink tents wash here and permanent ink i love this one my student love this one she has not finished it yet, 
so she's taking her time but we mixed everything here we mixed we mixed a uh, soluble graphite and i insist darwin please sponsor me send me something free okay i love your products and we mixed everything here we just threw everything everything here to experiment and this is by the reference photo is by Claudia Nice. This is the book. She likes to mix things with acrylic, with ink, with watercolor. In this case, I'm using ink tens. I'm going to try and show you the original somewhere here. Oops, I hope I don't jump so much out of the page. Um, here it is. So I'm going to lay this down carefully or I'm going to just, there you go. Okay. So this is the original and this is my version. Totally different, of course, at the bottom of the page. The engine was not so detailed, but I think, I think it's not that bad. So let me move it down. I cannot stand up to check my, my uh, stream. My camera is up there and stream yard is opened up there. But there you go. Okay. So yes, there you go. So that's the reference. Hello, Raul. ¿Cómo estás, Raul? Espero que bien. ¿Sigues en París? Are you still in Paris? So there you go. So I'm going to put this one here. And now we are working with uh, this one here. This set of cute mushrooms. And it's also going to finish very different. What I like about this book is that you can trace this, kind of, and then you can just go crazy and do things like this. That is nothing, nothing similar to what the original is. But anyway, I'm having fun here as well. I'm using sea salt for some special effects. Sea salt works very, very, very well with watercolor, not with ink tents. I didn't like this that much, but I'm going to continue working in some parts with sea salt. I'm starting the cute mushrooms here. And this week with my student, we're going to start working the leaves. So that's what we are doing here. Okay. So there you go. All right. So definitely, and the bright colors uh, are definitely because of ink tents. And now that my student is also falling in love with ink tents, you name it. Okay, so now let's go to my experimentation of the week. This is gouache. And, you know, you can have the typical kits sets that are also sold as temperas and I asked my sister to bring me something from Mexico City because here we have a problem here in Querétaro they are repairing the main one of the main avenues we have four main avenues in the city and I'm not in the city so um, they are in this main avenue that crosses from the south of the city to the north. So there's a lot of uh, lorries, trucks, cars, and they're going to take like a year to, to do something there, new bridges. I don't know what they're doing, but that avenue just created hell in all the city. So going to my specialized stationary art shop is impossible right now. It's a lot of traffic. Instead of 20 minutes, I can just be there in traffic for one hour going and then one hour coming back. 
because the other three avenues are now taking all the traffic, all the buses, all the trucks. So you name it, it's terrible. And my sister lives in Mexico City and she's 10 minutes away from the art, a very good art shop, stationery. So I asked her for some gouache. This is a Mexican brand. Uh, I promise I will investigate about Dr. Atoll, famous uh, landscape artist in Mexico, around the time of uh, Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo, more or less. Uh, he's not famous internationally, but this, uh, this brand is not necessarily his, but it's good. I mean, it's good to start, it's good experiment. So, this is the same reference that you saw from before, the same bird that Beth posted in the group, but it's different. This one has got a hangover. I think this one was before the hangover, so we can tell the story here. Maybe we should paint a moon here to indicate that this was at night and this crazy bird just finished. And it was his friend because the color is different. But anyway, that's creating the story here. Very crazy story. But well, going back to this, I asked for these tubes. They were very, very cheap, 18 millimeters, not big, but they're good for what they are for experimenting. Six colors, this is just what you need. Nothing else. Two for your tones and shadows. Three for mixing everything. And one brown because I don't like the brown that these three basic colors, primary colors create. So this is a sienna color. So I'm going to put them here. And I'm going to show you what I did, my experimentation. Um, gouache is like the baby of watercolors and acrylics. That's what my teachers told me. And certainly they are. Acrylics are very shiny unless they are for handicrafts and you have this matte, of the color Spanish mate uh, effect. And this one is very, very clear. It's transparent, I will say. It's transparent. It's very clear. I didn't like how it laid here. I love the red and the yellow. And what I did later is that uh, on, on the contrary of watercolor, what you can do with wash is that you can put clear colors on top, same as acrylics. So that's why I put here some white, a little bit of black. The black is also very clear. I had to put a lot of layers to have a nice coat and later I started mixing to get my secondary colors. So here you have them. Red to yellow, nice orange. This green, mid, mid green with black so I could see the, the opacity. And here we have a purple. And by adding a little bit of white, I can make them look a little bit of pastel. And there you go. You can use dry, uh, no, sorry, dry brush techniques here. But the secret of gouache is to have your first layer very, very fluid, not necessarily going to watercolor, and then on top of it, try to do a more creamy texture. Here I compare these to acrylics. This is an acrylic tube from the same brand that I have had for 10 years. It's not working there anymore. I think it's just not good. Here I have a matte acrylic, black. Yeah, I think this is black or a very dark shadow, white. This is gesso and what i did was testing i was testing um sharpies and i was testing 
these inks on top of all of them. They work, but I think they will ruin the tips, especially gesso. And these are Prismacolors. So definitely is a lot of people love having acrylics with um, Prismacolors for special effects. But it is this is also possible with gouache. It's not going to be exactly the same, but it's possible. So it's really nice. And that's what I did. So there you go. I don't have here an image that I can show you to work with wash right now and I don't have a lot of water but nice experimentation I saw Beth posting um, last night an image on her Facebook group and I'm going to try and find it here let me go and see if I can show it to you oh here it is this is what Beth posted yesterday Going to try and eliminate the glare and the moment i saw it i said "Ooh, this one is so good for attempting this with wash so let's see okay so oh well, it's getting dark but here you go all right i just stood up so to see if my streaming is still working you know the delay the delay makes me crazy it's really, really bad to try and adjust to the delay. So I'm going to try and paint this with wash later on. Okay. So there you go. As I don't have much time today because of what I told you that I'm doing, I'm not so excited to evaluate 25 compositions they are reports they had to write a report but i'm not really excited to evaluate that but i have to i have class with those guys on tuesday but i also have to start my preparation for the week but anyway so we're going to be working with alebrijes and i'm not sure if i have here my material I took a photo yesterday my material and today I was not sure if I had it in the morning if not I'll have to go upstairs and run for all that but let me show you what I have here I have these sculpting tools you don't have to go fancy with these and I just got them I only use my hands I have some rocks these rocks that you can use for pots to decorate okay yeah i know miriam i don't like the delay and they don't have a particular shape so i was thinking about transforming one of them into kind of a ladybug or something i got this foam clay and the characteristic of this foam clay is that it dries dries really fast and you can paint on top of it and i mentioned at the beginning of this of the stream that i have not sculpted anything uh, in a long time if you know the marvel series or movies um last year around this time, the Loki series uh, was streamed in, I think Disney Plus or something like that. So I like the character, I like the actor. And in one of the chapters, there was a crocodile Loki. So I created one for my niece because she's a fan of Loki and Marvel movies. And I gave her the, the Loki figure. I have that video of Loki in Miss G's Bits and Pieces, the channel that I mentioned before. But later on, I had some extra foam clay available. Even if you close these things, it starts drying, so you have to use it. And this is what I created. 
uh, let me just move this so you can see it. This is what I created like a year ago. I love orcas. I love these animals. These were the first whales I drew, I think. Paint and of course sculpt. So this is with these. Let's put it there. White, of course, but it's painted with acrylics. I don't like the fins that much because it I let it dry on this side. So anyway, there you go. And well, this is to show you more or less what you can do. So I was thinking about doing, well, let me put the orc here. I was thinking about doing something with one of these rocks, like a ladybug. And I'll have to use this foam over this weekend. If not, it would just dry and that wouldn't be good. So let's see, I won't be able to uh, paint anything here. As you can see, this is like just normal clay. And I thought it was a good color, base color for the alebrijes. So I saw this and stains your hands. So that's why I have this. I'm going to cover the rock to give it some weight, you know, that's the idea. I want to give this alebrije a little bit of weight. And let's see, it's really nice. I love this material. I have worked also with traditional clay um, and I have hardened that one with white glue, whatever you have got. Elmer's white glue, whatever brand you have. You mix your, imagine this is normal clay, uh, the one that we use for the kids, the one that they use in kindergarten. You just add a little bit of, of glue. You kind of work with that one. And then when it dries, it hardens. So it's really good. So I was thinking about doing kind of a ladybug. So there you go. Oh, I didn't know about those. But this ladybug is going to have another characteristic. We're going to give her, oh, because it's going to be a she. I don't know why I'm thinking about ladybugs always being she's. I'm going to give her big eyes. And then this is something that I got on Walmart. And I like it. Eyes crazy eyes but these are going to come at the very end because i'm going to paint this okay but you can get big eyes small eyes so i also got this like a couple of months ago i didn't know for what i was going to use eyes but anyway but now i have the elevator ideas so there you go so this ladybug needs to be an elevator not just typical ladybug. My hands are just so, I want to be so green right now. Okay, there were some bits of these that are already a little bit dry. I got four rugs because if, if I'm opening this one, I think that off stream I'll have to finish with these, especially right now that my hands are getting steam. But anyway, this is for kids. Uh, supposedly, supposedly, it says here, no mancha. No stain. No, this is not true. You can see it. My hands are getting green. So we're going to give this cute ladybug a tail. long. Oh, there's a fly here. A real fly. One of those fruit flies. So, let's see. Let's 
give it a bit of a shape. The idea is not for it to be perfect. I want the rock to still be visible here because here at the bottom I'm going to add a tag with my name. I'm going to auction these or sell them here in my neighborhood. I hope they can buy them or they want to buy them. As I mentioned before, um, people in Mexico, they sometimes don't appreciate things like this. They try to haggle. No, Marty, they don't have tails. What we are doing here is an alebrije. An alebrije is a mystical hybrid creature created in 1936 by Pedro Linares, uh, an artisan in Mexico City, who was very sick and he had a dream with uh, mixed hybrid creatures. I mean, for example, bulls with chicken, um, chicken heads or horns, uh, painted in beautiful, beautiful colors, very bright colors. And these strange creatures were shouting at him, Alebrije, Alebrije. And I think he was kind of in a coma when, uh, when he finally woke up, he told his family about his dream. And he started making figures. They're very, very popular in Mexico. And this one is going to be a ladybug with tail and horns. The good thing about this foam is that it is self-sticking. So you don't have to worry too much about this. But anyway, we can use a little bit of this to stick them properly. These are not the fanciest tools that you can have, but anyway. If you uh, kind of replay my other uh, streams, Marty, or if you watch the video of my scavenger hunt, the main character of my scavenger hunt is Pepe Alebrije, and he was inspired by some of the figures. Pedro Linares and his family have been producing alebrijes for years, decades. In Mexico, they are uh, made of paper mache. But if you go to southern states like Oaxaca in Mexico or Chiapas, you can buy them in wood, made of wood. I don't remember right now the special name of the, of the wood and uh, they are painted in different colors and that's what I want to do. I want to create something similar to, to those. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do here, and this is the experimentation part, is the wings. Ladybug wings. Oh my God, my niece would have loved this, but she was asleep last week. And she loves when we play with foamy. That's why I have this one, you know, because we were playing with foamy, but she took all the figures. Uh, she, she now is into cooking and baking because her mom is a very, very good baker, a very good cook. So my, my niece last, last Sunday, I posted something on Facebook of what we did and Instagram, but she was mostly making cupcakes and pizza slices. We were making food last week. So it was fun. So, so she took everything. I, I totally forgot to take pictures of what she did. And, but she's very talented. Last stream I show her drawings. I have here some, but now that my hands are stained, I dare not to to 
grab the paper because it's white paper and it's going to be finishing with a green stain so anyway okay this one could go there and certainly you know this is like morphe slow for a lot of us the moment you try to do something identical it never happens you name it hands eyes whatever comes in pairs one is much better than the other but anyway we are trying we are trying here okay so i don't want it to stick out that much and i'm literally literally just imagining this okay there you go and later on miriam later on, remember later on we have to agree if we're going to do a mega join stream let's agree on that let's see if we can do something uh that we can be working kind of on the same project okay and we can have like our different point of views and that would be very very fun so later on later on um during, probably during the week because i know that you have your your stream right after me so don't forget guys go with miriam right after then we can go and chat in messenger and see uh, what we can do and we can get organized and get the material okay and there you go okay this one as you can see i didn't i just press this and now it's just a stick okay so i don't have to use any glue here and this beautiful thing is going to dry and it's going to be i hope you can hear this it's going to harden enough right it's going to harden enough when it uh, finishes uh, drying and i don't have to use any glue okay so there you go all right yes i like this one i like how this crazy ladybug is turning of course, this is not going to be very, very smooth, but well, anyway, with a paint, it can be given the illusion that it's smooth. And it's a handmade thing. And, and it's, it has got stone. So it would be a very, very good desk decoration if you want to give it to somebody. Okay. And of course, I'll use, as soon as I finish painting this, crazy eyes for this one. So there you go. So we have the first. Okay. All right. All right. There you go. Let me see how much time I've got. Oh, it's just 7 a.m. I thought it was later. Okay. I might try and do something. I have a, still a lot of, of, of rocks, you know, I have a lot of them. And I do have a porcupine. I don't think I'll be able to go and retrieve it. It's here downstairs, but it's in a cupboard, a cupboard with a key. And I don't know where the key is right now. And I don't want to uh, leave you here just alone. So this was a ladybug. I'm going to try and do something monster-like right now. Let's see if we can do that. Okay. Well, look at this. I'm going to show you this because this is what my niece loves. And this is what uh, normal clay doesn't doesn't do so when you stretch it ooh, 
She likes this. She likes to do this. So these are also good special effects for things like this. But you can also cut it. You can do a lot of things here. Uh, I normally put it back into the container if I'm not uh, using it in the moment because literally it dries fast. You can, you can see it with Miss Ladybug here. Okay. All right. Then let's put another coat. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Marty. Thank you for coming. Yeah, I'll probably I will not stream until eight or seven forty-five because I also have some other things to do before Miriam, and sometimes my dad is having breakfast with me when. Uh, when I'm watching you, Miriam. So I want to do those things before. But when I'm watching you, I don't have him asking for certain things. Okay. Hi, Stacy. Good morning. How are you? Okay. So we're covering this rock. I'm going to try this one to be much better covered ladybug here oh i like i like her it's the first these are the first alibrijes ever i ever attempt so my first figure was a crocodile crocodile loki as i mentioned my second figure was this cute orca and now we're doing alibrijes they don't have to be realistic. Okay. So I covered this one. I'll try to do monster like. So a monster like bug or something like that, maybe. Okay. Mm, there we go. This might work. And I like the effect of the of what I'm showing you. So let me pick out a little bit more clay. I have to finish using this one today. Okay. Then um, it dries in 24 hours. So anyway, you have 12 colors. You can mix it. My most favorite one is white, like with this one. We're going to try and do a thick neck. And uh, what I'm doing here is, well, it's going literally going back to elementary school, you know, kindergarten. Kindergarten, kindergarten 101, ladies. We're doing alebrijes. That's the only thing that you need. And you can do this with your grandkids. Just tell them they are hybrid creatures. They can mix everything and then they can be painted in different colors. So we have a little bit of the neck here. Mm, trying to make it smooth with this. I do have clay, traditional clay, but I have not opened my packages because the same, I will, I will need to use them up in a single session because if not, it goes bad. It has happened to me. Yes, Miriam, that's the word, fantasy creatures, hybrid creatures. So let's paste his head. And there you go. Oh, hello, Malia, Malia. I don't know how to pronounce your name. In Spanish, it will be because we have uh, people with your name. We call them Malia. So you do have Spanish pronunciation for your name. So how are you today? Thank you for coming. 
So we're making crazy alebrijes here. Let's stretch this a little bit. Hmm. I can hear noise upstairs, so I think that is waking up. But he won't be down until roughly seven thirty-eight. So that's why I have to hurry up and finish the breakfast thing that I am planning. Okay, this is kind of going to look like more like a dinosaur thing. Okay. So oh thank you. Yeah, it's foam clay. Foam clay for kids. You probably have something like this uh, in the States because we normally get what you normally have there, right? Mexican adapted, of course, but we normally get the same. And if you do get this one, don't buy colors. It stains, even though it says it doesn't stains. But anyway, there you go. All right. And if you use a normal clay, and if you want your figures to last, just add a little bit of Elmer's glue, white glue, and there you go. These are gonna be the legs, but this cutie will have kind of, this one is more or less looking like a turtle, you know? By accident because I wasn't planning to make a turtle and I love turtles that's why I love that's why I love the cover of this mixed media block that I have here because of the turtle but I think this is going to be more turtle crazy turtle alebrije thing more than anything okay So let's see. Yeah, I think I'll get inspired as a turtle alebrije thing with dinosaur thing. Okay. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, even the face. Well, I, I wanted the face to be a little bit more insect like, but anyway. The good thing about this is that you can just continue adding layers of this foam clay, self sticks, and there you go. Well, let's use this. Let's use this for a little bit of finger-like thing. Okay. This turtle will not have the same number of fingers. So it's technically a monster. Technically a monster. What we call it. Oops. Dropping this. Just going to soften this a little bit. And there you go. I was going to do a crochet turtle like a year and a half ago. I got the patterns, these dolls that are made of crochet, and I don't know what I did to the pattern. I have to go and check my old computer files because I think I have my pattern there. But, there you go, interesting, yes, amigurumis, I couldn't think of the word, thank you Miriam, I was just literally doing what my students normally do, that is they tell me more or less the approximate word and then I help them a little bit during the exams. I shouldn't help them, but, well, sometimes I do. 
Okay. And I, we had a teacher, we had a crochet teacher coming here in 2021, 2022, giving us, uh, giving us tips and how to do the normal knitting and crochet. And I created some crazy monsters during those times. I crocheted uh, a chicken, a hen, uh, an owl. I have them there somewhere. Maybe next stream I'll take them out. I had a baby Yoda crocheted. Didn't like the face that much, but anyway, it was the first ever baby Yoda that I attempted. So ah, that could be a good idea to use the rest of the clay here. Off camera, of course. All right. So we're missing the tail. So the basic figure, it's a turtle, but there you go. And yes, and let me tell you, Malia, let me tell you, they are not difficult to make. Amigurumi is really easy because everything is single crochet and you need to find this very special stuffing that we use for pillows and, and you can buy in some craft stores um, special eyes that have kind of security pins so if you use those crochet figures for babies you can just um, attach them they are not really difficult to make and they are very pricey. Here in Mexico, they are very pricey. That's why I started my own, because they were very pricey. And when I discovered it's just basic figures, like what we are doing here, then it's not, it's not different. Because you use the same, you use spheres, you use um, cylinders, you use basic shapes like the ones I'm using here for the animals, you saw them together. There you go. Okay. Yeah, that's the feeling. That's the feeling, um, medium sometimes the cheapest you can find and it's cheapest by kilograms i remember i i bought like one kilogram of this filling and uh, my god it was like one cubic meter i didn't know how to bring it home it was not a good idea to buy so much so cheap so light there you go so I like horns, as you have seen. So we're going to give this turtle wings. Of course, I need the first of all, the shell, and then some cute little horns for this one. But I think we're going to do kind of Dragon horns. Let's see if we can go. Yeah, this size is good. Let's see if the other one is similar. Okay, trying to concentrate here. That's a good market. Fairs. Yeah, here we normally have Christmas markets and other people sell amigurumi so i think that not that i'm going to knit here live i don't think so 
I have not needed for a long time. As you can imagine, classes literally absorb me a lot. So I normally don't have much time for all the hobbies that I would like to. And then I go and see you guys doing beautiful things. And then I want to try them and then like, oh my God, I don't have time. So that's frustrating. Vacation periods. Yeah, I normally try a lot of things during vacation periods, but I also want to rest a bit. So there you go. Oh, Stacy, micro amigurumi. Wow, I, I won't be able to do that. Not anymore. I try to do mine big enough. Because, you know, with age comes fat side. And even though I have progressive lenses and I have big looking glasses, I, I really don't like working with micro things there. Not anymore. Okay. And there's never, as you're saying, there's never enough time to do a lot of things. Okay, I think I'm going to do the shell. Okay, this little thing is going to be probably looking down. I want to push this up before it dries. Okay, so I hope it doesn't go down. Let's do the shell. Oh no, my Siamese is here. And when my Siamese is here, that means trouble. Nico. Nico. Uh, okay. I grabbed him just very briefly to show him to you on camera. I hope that I can do that. Okay. He's going to get very angry after this. But this is a troublemaker. This is my troublemaker. Big, enormous, eight kilogram cat. Just messing around. So he's very upset because I just hold him against his will. And there you go. Yeah, his name is Nico. Very, you were very close, Raul. Very, very close role. I'm going to put his his correct name in the chat. He's Nico. He's Nico. He was adopted in 2020, yeah, during the pandemic. And my mom fell in love with him. That's why we got him. Okay. Yeah, he, he, he just went running, so I don't know why he's going to knock. He has destroyed a lot of things. He's just a mess. But my dad and I love him. And because he was uh, mostly my mom's idea to adopt him, we just love him so much. It doesn't matter how much he destroys. This is not going to be a normal turtle. Well, I'm not sure if I should. No, maybe I should just paint it. So no idea. Okay. There you go. All right. This one is going to be interesting to add the shell. But as we don't want something realistic, it's going to stay like that. Accident turtle with horns, because this is also going to be an alebrije. So this one is going to have more horns and I need them to be a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker, okay. Oh, Raul, that's interesting. So 
How many siblings do you have? Yeah, that's right. I don't remember the name of the Pokemon turtle, but yeah, I was not that much into Pokemon. My my sister was, but not for so long. You know, she she grew up like faster before she could get caught up in Pokemon mania. Okay. So there you go. So to clarify this for Miriam a little bit, okay. So sets of could be like pares de mellizos, but you're not alike, right? You're not like uh, like looking alike, right, Raúl? So they are like mellizos, pero que no se parecen, que no son idénticos. So born at the same time, but not with the same physical characteristics, which is very interesting. Because not a lot of not a lot of families can say that they have twins. And in some cases the twins are fraternal, so they are not son fraternales, so they are not identical. And in some other cases, there you go. It's a little bit, it's a little bit different. I don't know how it works. Uh, my family doesn't have this predisposition of, of twins. Okay. So. Yeah, I normally use them as you're using these, Miriam. Like for me, uh, normally when I, when I listen to the word twins or gemelos, then I normally think of identical. They are like two drops of water. Identical, you cannot distinguish them. But then later I understood the the difference that sometimes you can have, for example, twins that are a boy and a girl and they are fraternal, they are born at the same time and not necessarily identical. But it was crazy for me. And now that Raul mentioned in biology, definitely you get me lost in that. Okay, I was good in biology. Not anymore. Not anymore. So this is something that is totally new for me. But anyway. So this little turtle is morphing right now into a dragon. And I think it's interesting. I'm just letting my imagination go crazy here. And this is already drawing on me. That's why I don't want to take out all the foam clay at the same time because it would be drying already. So there you go. And where is all your family role? Are they in Brazil or are they... Uh, I think you mentioned India, but I'm not sure. Sorry if, I, if my memory is not working there. Because I know that you're in Spain, but what about your other siblings? Okay, that's quite interesting. It would be nice if all of you got together in, in Paris for your birthday, right? That would be so cool. Okay, we're going to do this. My green hands are upsetting me a lot. This would be the first and the last time I buy this clay in colors, you know. The next time I go and get this in the supermarket, it's going to be white. And yes, I bought this foam clay 
in Walmart. Okay, so I think I'm going just to finish these horns here. And I'm going to let you go and do other things. I'm also going to go and do other things before Miriam streams. So I'm just going to finish up this. I think there are like three that I, three or two, just two. That was enough. Two little horns. And I think this turtle, monster, alebrije, whatever you want to call it, fantasy animal, I think this one is going to have wings as well. So over here, I'm going to put a set of wings. But there you go. Okay. All right. Very interesting, Raul, that you're telling us that you get together for those big celebrations. But enjoy, enjoy all the years. That's what I would suggest. Okay. So I'm going to put this one back and close, make sure that my package here is sealed and closed. Anyway, I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do today is probably finish this one. Try and finish also uh, this product with more rocks. I have a lot of rocks. See what, what we can do there. And probably give them a base coat of something. And next stream, I'll paint this live with acrylics and show you the amigurumi. And if I finish something more on this, this material, uh, I'll show it to you. Uh, also the mushrooms. I don't want to touch them because look at my hands. Okay, guys, so I'm going to let you go. And this will be left to air dry. And see you next time. Okay, so thank you very much. And bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you.